Hello. So I have um, a new short film coming out tomorrow. It's called When I Wanted to Die. Um, it's uh, something I made earlier this year, about Feb February. Yeah, so it's eight months old. So anything that old in the YouTube world, you're like, yeah, I hate it. Um, but there is one thing that I don't talk about in that video that I think is really important to address. So 2017 was undeniably like the best year of my life. Um, I was in a relationship where I finally thought like, oh my God, I found my person. I'm going to marry this person. I had amazing friendships that I'd cultivated after like years of searching for like my tribe and my people. And I was the lead and the executive producer of Youth and Consequences, the show I did with YouTube Brad. And it was like a dream come true. And I loved the cast and I loved the script. And I felt like this is what I've been working towards for like 10 years. This is like this dream job. And so when my depression also got the worst it's ever been in my entire life, um, it felt so weird. I was like, externally, I have everything I ever wanted. And yet for the first time, I'm now hearing voices or one voice, you know, it's, it's just this one voice. It was this one deep, I would say male voice that would randomly speak up out of nowhere and say, kill yourself. And I knew I was hearing voices because it felt like it was in the room. It felt like it was like this disembodied thing, but I was undeniably alone wherever I was whenever I heard him uh, in the beginning. And I didn't tell anyone about it because I selfishly thought, oh, these people care about me so much. If I tell people my depression so bad that I'm hearing a voice, I think they'll hospitalize me and I won't get to live my dream. Um, or they'll put me on medication and I won't be present for the dream that I'm living. And it was so hard because it was the moment I realized like, oh, the problem is me. Like everything is going perfect in my life. Everything I ever wanted is happening right now. And yeah, my brain's gonna decide to like be the most depressed it's ever been and give me a fucking annoying voice that's gonna tell me these terrible things. So the problem is me. And um, I did not tell anybody about it for a very long time. I sort of just kept it to myself. Um, and towards the end of last year, I was like, you know what? Like, I am a hypocrite if I am constantly trying to be a voice for mental health and for mental illness. And at the time, we're like, I need help. I'm refusing to get help. Then I'm a hypocrite. And so I talked to my therapist about it. And he was like, oh, have you told anyone about this? And I was like, no, I'm just kind of afraid. I, I also am worried that like, like depression isn't glamorous, you know, like dealing with someone who's depressed is like annoying most of the time. I feel like for people around me, because it's like this, this disease people don't get where you're like, no, I know I should be happy. No, I, I know that logically. I know I should be fine, but I'm not. And mine manifests itself in ways where I'm not like lying on the floor. I'm more like I'm upset or I like feel a lot of things manically or I'm like happy one minute and then I'm crying the next or I'm overtly sensitive. And so it's just like all over the place mood wise. And so it's just not, not a fun thing to live with for people who are, you know, in my life. And he was like, you know, I feel like you really should tell the people that you love about this. Um, and so I did. I I was about to tell my boyfriend when he got back from this trip, um, but before I could, he broke up with me. And then the friends that I had, some shit happened and that kind of like got put on pause and my show didn't get renewed. And it was Christmas time, which means there was no work to do. All my friends were out of town. I, I now wasn't on this trip I was supposed to go with with my boyfriend and his family and I was home all alone for like two or three weeks. And I got into a huge fight with my mom and um, spent Christmas completely alone. And I had these two or three weeks where I was totally isolated and everything I thought I had was now gone. And that voice just got so intense when I was by myself. And for the first time, I would say like in my life, I seriously considered very logically okay, if I kill myself, how am I going to do it? 
um, what's going to happen. Having been on the other side, I know like it's going to devastate my brother. I know my parents are going to be upset. Um, I know my friends will be hurt. Who's going to take care of my cats? Do I need to write a will? And um, it got really bad to where I had a plan. And I know from, you know, being in this space, like having a plan is like a major red flag because the only next step then is for that person to follow the plan, to kill themselves. And I managed to talk myself out of it and be like, no, 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 like this will pass. Like just to, you know, don't be a hypocrite. Like remember everything you've ever said to people who wanted to kill themselves, like it's going to pass. Like, yes, it seems like it's forever right now. Yes. Like, fuck, you're so... I was just so in pain and I just felt like I had nothing and like I was nobody and I wasn't worth anything at all. Um, I literally like, I have this big whiteboard on my wall and I wrote out like, do not kill yourself, like all across it. And I put it on post-it notes and I put it on my bathroom mirror and like just every day when the voice came, I would just be like, shut the fuck up. Um, and so I mean, I don't want to be hyperbolic and I don't want to be overdramatic, but really the short that I made that comes out tomorrow at nine is sort of what I had to live for. Um, Cause at that moment it felt like I didn't have anything to live for. And I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry on a live stream. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. So I made this short come up when I wanted to die and it highlights every moment in my life. I've sort of wanted to die. I mean, I pared it down, obviously. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's really important to me. I look back on it now and because it's eight months old, like the short's eight months old, you're like, oh, I could have done so many things better. Or, like this is too cheesy or like this is whatever. But um, no, the doing that short is honestly like I poured my savings into it because I was like, I just need something to do that reminds me of like why I'm here and like makes me want to live because this is really hard. Um, and I just need to remember, like, to, to, to do something, honestly, to just do something. So, yeah, that's what it is. Um, I really hope you like it. I hope, I hope it helps some of you who are maybe going through now what I was going through, like, eight, nine months ago. But, yeah, it's I'm on the other side of it. I mean, depression is still a big old bitch, but I feel a lot better. And I really took care of myself, at least in a way that was healthy. And I credit that to, you know, all the mental health education that's available online and like doing the things that you're supposed to do just like every single day and hoping that they add up and eventually they do. You just, it takes a while to notice, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, please don't kill yourself. If you are also suicidal, just don't do it. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of great things to live for. And, and now I'm pleased to say, you know, I have really great friends. I'm still hunting for my next dream job, but it's all good. And, you know, I'm single, but it's great because I got cats. Um, but, yeah, life is a bunch of motherfucking ups and downs. You just got to, like, ride out those lawns waiting to get to that next time. <sighs> yeah. Okay. I hope you enjoy it. Have a lovely day. Stay awesome, Gotham.